my name's Chris, cosplay vicar. I'm a part of the 501st Legion here in the UK, the UK Garrison. And in the UK Garrison, I am Darth Vader, Empire Strikes Back, uh, Stormtrooper from A New Hope, Stormtrooper from The Last Jedi, uh, Death Trooper uh, from Rogue One, uh, and a Ghostbuster, as well as an Imperial Officer, a whole collection of cosplays. And one of the things I love about cosplay uh, is not just buying stuff off the shelf, but making it myself and knowing how it all goes together and how it all fits together. And that was no different when I came to build my Darth Vader. Now, as I built my Darth Vader, I realised uh, that there isn't tons of help out there. Uh, there's lots of neat videos uh, where people have bought a uh, chess box or uh, some shins from someone who makes a kit and that, that kit then is what they've put together to make their uh, Darth Vader. Now, let's be honest, they look amazingly good. I, they are so, so, so good. Uh, there are so many great kits out there from Dark Side or Paul Tomatic uh, props. They make these amazing chess boxes. I just could not afford to pay £250 plus shipping uh, import tax to get one of those chess boxes here in the UK. Uh, so I had to start thinking creatively. So one of the things I want to do with these videos is show you how to be able to put together uh, these items uh, for uh, Darth Vader, uh, not at a budget, it's still costly, uh, but trying to rein in the price a little bit. Uh, and you know, Darth Vader is one of the most expensive costumes that you can build if you want to go for screen accuracy. So what I want to do with this video is walk you through the chest box, how to build the chest box uh, and try to do uh, as much work as you can. Now the key thing is if you go and buy something that somebody else has made, the cost is high and you put less time into it. The only way of bringing that price down is if you do more of the work. More work you do, the less the cost will be. And that's certainly the direction that I wanted to go in. Uh, in my last few builds, my Death Trooper uh, particularly, I got very good at building using a 3D printer. So I want to talk to you about how to build the Darth Vader chess box for Empire Strikes Back uh, using a 3D printer. And this is where I'm up to so far with my chess box. Uh, I'll put the lights on, turn the lights on for you uh, in a moment. This is where I'm up to. There's a few things I want to swap out and, and, and change and do differently and I'll explain what those things are as I go along. Uh, but certainly this was good enough uh, to get me cleared in the UK garrison. Now, where do we start? Let's talk about the actual box itself. This is a draft print uh, of my final files. Now, all the files that I used uh, and kind of designed myself, uh, they'll be in the link below where you can find them and you can print your own chess box, certainly all the 3D printable parts. So this was the chess box that I designed. One of the key uh, things that's really important about the chess box is it's not actually square. Uh, it's uh, slightly tapered at the top. Uh, the angles in uh, Empire Strikes Back's chess box aren't equal. So what I ended up having to do was find some incredibly good photographs from the original movie I also downloaded a whole string of different chess boxes from different manufacturers. Now, some of them you have to pay for. I wasn't going to be going paying for them. Um, so I was able to kind of go through their websites and see their process of how they got to their final iteration. One of the key uh, things about the chess box is it's not even. It, you can't just build a square and then put some blocks on it. It doesn't work like that. Uh, it, it certainly tapers more on the right side than the left side. Um, the curves that you find on the sides here aren't identical either. Uh, so I had to really think about how I was going to replicate this in uh, 3D. But I did. And what I also did was I wanted to, this is my version 2 back. I've got my version 3 in here. I wanted to create a back to the chest box that was going to fit in perfectly. Screws in the corner and then all of the uh, strapping. Uh, would be accessible uh, on the back as well. What I also wanted to do was have a little hole where I could access all the electronics uh, on the back. So I designed up that to match uh, the front. Now, if you were to 3D print one of these, 
it's going to be a lot of hard work in the sense that you are going to have to do a heck of a lot of sanding. Uh, so what I used, I really like this stuff. This is spray putty, simple sprays. There used to be a more expensive version of this, which was about eight pound a can. You can now pick this up on Amazon for about three ninety nine, roughly that kind of price. I would usually be using about three to four coats of this stuff. You'd spray it, give it a sand, spray it, give it a sand, spray it, give it a sand, and then I'd finish it off with some spot putty as well, where I need uh, to uh, really deal with some blemishes. Um, I printed this, if you are interested, that way up. So it was flat on the print bed, uh, which meant there was nothing inside that needed ripping out. Uh, it does mean that the top then needs a little bit of work sanding, but I didn't have a problem with that because I love the fact that I printed this in about 12 hours. This version was 12 hours. This version I printed in six hours because this is in draft. So if you were to look at this, you can see it, it's got print lines all over the top. But this was my test print, so I was fine with it. Uh, the same is with my back as well. That's a test print and it looks different uh, on my final version. So, I originally printed uh, all of the greeblies for the front on my PLA printer, but I then swapped them out. So these got replaced. This is why I've got these as spares. These spares got printed out on my resin printer. So I ended up, for all the greeblers, where I needed detail and I didn't need, want to do much cleanup on those, I used my resin printer. So greeblers, all of these little greeblers here, uh, I printed these on the resin printer uh, on here. And I think these are just, yeah, these are resin prints as well. So these are really nice and clean. You can see on the underside, this is resin, uh, not PLA. Um, these were PLA, you can see that on the back, uh, but what I did was I, I swapped all of those bits out. So everything now on the top of the uh, chest box uh, is resin print. All of those are available just to click on that file below uh, to print those. Some things that I did buy. One of the key things about building something like this is you've got to weigh up the gamble between what am I going to make and what is somebody else going to make for me. For me, if anything is metal, a metal part, it, you, can, you can hide your crimes with a 3D print if you use a metal part on it. So if there's real screws, use real screws. Don't 3D print those screws. The reason for that is you see those screws and you can tell instantaneously, is that a 3D print or is that real or not? The same is with this. Uh, the bars that are on the front, I wanted these to be aluminium. Uh, so actually, I bought these bars from Felix Props. I paid about £20 for them. Now, the overall kit, if I was to buy an overall kit from somewhere, I won't name any particular manufacturers, but if I was to do that, uh, you'd be looking at about £250 plus shipping plus import tax. Um, I decided to be very careful with what I purchased on this. So the stickers that go on the front uh, across here, I bought those. They were about six pounds, seven pounds from uh, Phoenix Props. Uh, these metal um, bars on the front, again, about 20 pounds from Phoenix Props. Now, th those two items were low enough that I paid no import tax. They were shipped to me and I didn't pay any import tax on those. So that was a win. What I also bought, the only other thing that I bought in this was the uh, insides. So. What I've done is I have an access port at the back. I'm able to reach in. Uh, I'm gonna swap this out with an on and off switch eventually, but it's so easy to get to, I don't need to. So uh, I have a little access port for the batteries on the back, and there you go. The electronics that go in here, I decided it was worth buying those. Now I got that from Portomatic uh, Props Studios. Uh, I had that shipped to me. I can't remember how much I paid now. My mind has gone blank. I want to say £35, but it may have been more like 50 I just don't, I don't remember. It's about that price. Um, but for me, it was worth buying the electronics because they good electronics means you can hide your crimes with the rest of the um, chess box. The uh, bars as well. So anything metal, anything flashy. I would get somebody else to make those for me uh, just because it, it's good to have those professionally made. So 3D print uh, PLA, 
Uh, these are resin, 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 PLA. So you get the part, the back PLA as well. The straps, the straps, if you were to have someone uh, ship you some straps like this, you could be looking anywhere up to 50 to 80 pounds just for the straps. If you're buying the entire kit, uh, you'd, you'd kind of get some straps maybe thrown in or you might have to pay a little bit extra. Uh, what I did was I live in East London and there's lots of places that do belts and belt manufacturing. What I was able to do uh, was uh, go and get myself some belts that had not been a hole punched before. What you don't want to do is buy black belts. It doesn't work. You need to have really high quality matte leather on these and you want to be able to put your own holes in. So I have a belt punch so I could put my own uh, belt holes in here. Uh, but essentially I was able to go and to a belt maker and get myself the raw leather to make this myself. All in all, that costs me somewhere in the region of about £22, £23 uh, to make those here in East London. Now, you may pay more or less depending on what market store you go to and what quality of leather you buy. Uh, this is really nice leather and I was very, very surprised that I didn't pay more. Uh, but uh, if you're chatty and friendly, people like to give you a good deal, don't they? So, the way that I have this working is it crosses over at the back. Mm -hmm. there we go. So that would go straight over my head, onto my chest and around the back like a normal chest box does. Um, it fits usually about this height. So what I have done with this is I have used screws and little bolts on the backs uh, with the leather. I've not permanently attached those. I will eventually, but what I wanted to do was to be able to adjust these depending on lockdown weight, um, but also uh, if I've not got it quite where I need it to be, I can actually fiddle with this and keep fiddling. So I have these little screws with a bolt on the back and those screws allow me to adjust uh, the shape of how this fits onto my body uh, when I'm trooping. So there we go. All in all, doing a little bit of maths, 20 pounds, I've probably paid about a hundred pounds maximum on this, opposed to buying a kit for 250 plus shipping, uh, dot, 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 dot. Um, I think the key thing for me is the resin uh, prints. On a chess box, you want it to be sharp. It's what draws people's eyes. Uh, so that's where the resin prints came in. Now I want to just explain how I painted the resin prints and how I did some of the details uh, on here. So let's talk about uh, resin prints first. So once um, you have printed with the resin, you don't need to use primer filler. I've found going straight, this is the paint that I used, it's the high coat, perfect finish, matte black. That's what I've been using um, on my uh, chest box. I've also used this on my belt boxes, which I'll show you in another video. But where I've wanted to do, where I've basically wanted to turn something that's resin into something that looks genuinely metal, this stuff, rub and buff, uh, silver, is what I've been using there. And what you're able to do with this is you put a little bit on a, on a tray, get yourself a cloth, uh, you take a little spot of it and you're able to just rub it in, rub it in, rub it in. You leave it to dry, you come back a little while later and with a cloth you can polish and polish and polish and eventually you get something that looks uh, like this. One thing I may do in the future is swap those coin slots out for aluminium ones. Phoenix Props do some really nice ones and they're not that expensive, but I just, at this moment, uh, put everything into probably what I want to on the chest box right now. I am thinking about uh, swapping out these buttons on the front. Now, the buttons. I've noticed on the Sith Lord detachment on the website, there's a mixture of opinions and mixtures of things that people do. 
One option is to get yourself some of these arcade machine buttons uh, that look like this. Get yourself some arcade buttons, you get yourself red and you get yourself blue. And what I've noticed is that some, uh, some guys like to use these little buttons. Be why? They use these because the green version of these are on the belt boxes. Uh, and then they use these on the chest box. I actually really like them. I prefer them on the chest box, but it's not screen accurate. You'll never see Darth Vader in Empire Strikes Back using uh, these little uh, electronic arcade buttons. So I checked out on that. I decided I wasn't going to go down that route, although you can see I did buy them. Didn't use them. They worked out at about £4.50. So I didn't waste that much money on those. What I decided to do was I resin printed these buttons and then using uh, some of this acrylic um, paper, it's, it's essentially double-sided sticky paper, uh, I had some of this lying around anyway from a past build and I decided to use this uh, on the buttons. It's the right colour, it's the right texture, it's not exactly what was in the movie. Now in the movie they had these little acrylic squares. I want to get some, uh, I've yet to find anybody in the UK who makes them. If you know anybody in the UK I would love to hear that. I've only found them in places like Germany. Uh, that's why I've gone down this route. I didn't want to spend more money on those, but I would really like to swap those out. And the way I designed these buttons, I can actually very easily 3D print myself uh, some of the buttons again and then just put the aluminium um, acrylic, red and blue acrylic in the top. Um, so they, these may even just pop out, I'm not quite sure. So it's, a two, it's, it's two pieces to the uh, design of the button, the, the surround, and then you've got the top. So the way around it I've worked out is using this stuff. Now this stuff, you can buy it on Amazon. Uh, a sheet costs no more than a couple of quid. So that's essentially, you see the blue against the white background there, there's the red. Um, I ended up with a lot of this left over from a, from a Christmas project, so I was able to kind of use that stuff. That's one of the things that I would really like to swap out, and that's what I'm planning on swapping out uh, as soon as I find somebody in the UK that makes those. The stickers on the front as well here, uh, that's all the same material. It's just a sticky sheet of this acrylic uh, paper. Um, you can buy kits of these stickers to stick on. It's cheaper to make your own. You've just got to be very good at cutting very square uh, stickers. So there we go. Talked about where I got the electronics from. Talked about Phoenix props and where I got the uh, tubes from. The final thing is what glue do I use? So uh, spray, uh, I've got the matte uh, high coat paint. What glue do I use? Do you use super glue? I don't use super glue. Super glue has the danger of going running wild. You put a blob on, the next thing you know, it's absolutely everywhere and you've ruined your prop. It also means that you can't swap something out. So later down the line, if you decide you want to change something on your prop, you can't do it because you've committed to it uh, with super glue. So I use E6000. This is the same stuff that I'd use on my Stormtrooper. On most UK Garrison 501st members would just use this on, on all of their cosplay builds it's not very expensive uh, and as you can see this is a new tube that I've recently kind of had shipped uh, this is basically what I use E6000 you can glue if you don't like what you've done you can with a bit of force remove it and not cause any damage um, but it's pretty much permanent when it's there unless you want to remove it uh, so that's what I've used on my build now the final bit is um, the Empire Strikes Back chess box definitely has scuff marks and damage marks. That's what you use, it's the rub and buff. So not only did I use the rub and buff uh, on some of the greeblies, okay, I also used it just on the edges to make it look like it's worn and been damaged. Before we finish then, I'm gonna unscrew the back. So the way that I designed the, the files on this was very simple. I designed it so the back would screw on and off, but I don't need to access it because I've already put that little port in there. But just to show you where the electronics go and how they fit inside. 
one of the things with a 3D printer, if you try to align the screw holes up for, re for any reason they're not quite aligning with the way that you want them to in your design, um, what I do is I uh, just get a soldering iron, warm up the uh, screws so they're hot. I then screw them in while they're hot and it melts the plastic around the screw and it means that going forwards that screw hole matches uh, your screws perfectly. So there we go. So this now pops off the back and here you go. There's the electronics inside. I've got it very, very simply. It just came from Portomatic with the cables coming off to uh, a nine volt battery. I swapped out the nine volt battery for two AA. I, I have AAs lying around everywhere. Every one of my kit boxes has, uh, double A, sorry. I have double A batteries everywhere. So they're in all my boxes. Uh, so I uh, I've just put a couple of double A's in here. I'm actually gonna swap that out uh, later in the year with a rechargeable uh, USB pen uh, with an on and off switch on that, which will be accessible through uh, the port in the, the back of the box. Uh, so that's what it looks like inside. It's very simple. Um, glued in there with a hot glue gun. If I ever need to remove that, if I ever want to make another chest box, print another chest box, uh, I can do that because I've not permanently glued this in. This is glued in with a hot glue gun and you can remove that very, very easily. And then to turn it off, I just have to reach inside and to take that out and uh, remove the connectors. So there you go. My Empire Strikes Back chess box. Made for about a hundred pound or less, something like that. Um, yeah, you can say, Chris, it's not as good as the kits. Those kits are absolutely insanely good. Yes, the difference is, mine cost me a hundred. Those cost 250 plus shipping, blah, 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 blah. If you want to make one of these, Look, my files are not perfect. I fiddled, I've twiddled, I've done all sorts with them, uh, but they are in the link below. You'll feel, feel free to download them, print them yourself. The only thing that you may find slightly annoying is on the back. I have actually uh, imprinted in there Cosplay Vicar, uh, so I know uh, this is my chess box. Uh, that is still in there, so you may want to remove that or melt that out or something like that. So there you go. My Empire Strikes Back chess box uh, for about a hundred pounds. I hope that's inspired you to make your chess box. Uh, cosplay is expensive, so any way we can make it cheaper. Uh, and it's more fun, because I've made this myself. I've fiddled and twiddled, and I've really committed to making this myself. Uh, nobody else really has had much of a hand in it. So I'm very pleased uh, with this. Uh, check out my other videos where we look at the shins, uh, we look at the belt boxes, and we look at how to build your own lightsaber. Until next time, uh, do subscribe, uh, do share this video, and please leave some nice little comments. Uh, it'd be nice to have something positive in the chat. Anyway, see you soon.